What's up guys, welcome back to another drawing tutorial, Naruto Sage Six Path, but alternate AI generated sort of thing. So it's a little bit different. It's kind of like a straightforward portrait, but he just, he still has the sage color around his eyes, which I thought was kind of cool. Landscape page, pencil eraser, hit pause. If I go too fast, which sometimes I do, and I apologize, <laughs> but I try my best. Where to begin? So. I guess the headband, right? Because it like flies across the top of his head and it'll just center everything for us. So like the center point of my page is about here, right? And the headband is just like a little bit below. So what we're going to do, I'll mark it out first. So like say the edge of his ear, like where the headband touches the ear kind of will be sort of there, say. And we'll go with another side there. Right, so that's like the width of his head. And then this kind of flies across his eyebrows. So we'll just bring it down across his eyes this way. It's just like a standard sort of curve, like a U shape. So his headband will be like in here and then his hair will come up from this part and then his face is down here okay so he has those v sideburns right always naruto has these sometimes they're hairier than well there's like sometimes there could be an extra little flourish of a spike there but mostly there's just these kind of v's so his eyes then are just in underneath right here so say on this side standard sort of naruto eyes right so you go up and it just curves across and then we've got a spike coming down here and then the bottom eyelid comes across that way and you can like thicken this up a little bit you know especially the spike here in the corner and like maybe at the top a little bit like that so depending on how you like to draw Naruto eyes so his iris so he's kind of looking up at us right so it's kind of like a half circle just underneath here, curving around, right? And I'm gonna give him, you could go round eyes, but I'm gonna go Kurama sort of cat-like eyes, right? So just a slit. And you could go sage eyes as well, but I won't complicate it too much because I'm gonna add the orange around the eyes as well. So we'll go for his eyebrow now. So he's frowning pretty heavily. He looks pretty serious, right? So you've got, this sort of tick line that touches the top of his eye, right? So it like comes across the eye this way. And it goes right up to the headband. There. Okay. And then it'll kind of be a bit skinny here and get wider as it goes like up this way. And we'll go with maybe another sort of frown line. And we want them to be kind of aggressive looking. So... Like we'll go maybe some like wrinkle lines in the middle. So we want it to be like super serious, right? And then around that, so we've got that orange sage uh, line. Now this isn't normally drawn in with a black line. It's done with color. But just so we know where it is, I'll draw it in. Right, so it just comes around the eye here. And then it'll eventually sort of uh, disappear into his eyelid there. Okay, and that'll be that orange color. So different kind of eyes, alternate sort of version, right? So we'll go over and do the other eye, right? So you're about eye width, right? Naruto eyes are in proportion. So the width of this eye will be the distance between the two tear ducts, right? So like this space and this space would be about the same. So this is where like his other tear duct line will start like his other this spiky line and this again will curve over and go back and then we got the spike down here and then just the bottom eyelid line curving under here and again you can add a bit of thickness to the corner of his eye And maybe the 
top of his eyelid line there a little bit as well just darken it up and then a half circle again for his iris and pupil so just coming out from say here go yeah just you want it to be roughly in the same position All right, and then we'll go for that straight Kurama fox eye coming down that way. Make them roughly the same size again. And there's other eyebrow, so heavy frown. It touches his top eyelid line. It goes up underneath the headband here. And it's kind of skinnier down at the front. Some wrinkles and stuff on his nose. And then that sort of orange line and some eyelid lines, same as the other side. And this will kind of just go in around his eye there. All right, so that's his eyes basically. So you could go for face shape now, or you could go for the features. We'll go for the features because it's easier to measure sort of things out, right? So his nose. Be about down here. You could, of course, sketch out a rough face shape if you're able. So his nose is a bit different than what we normally see in art. So we'll put a little bit more detail in it here. It's kind of a bit more realistic. And then there's a nose line there. And then his mouth is real wide, like it stretches all the way out to the outside of his eyes. And he's looking super serious. So is it underneath? Yeah, it's like underneath here. So the inside of his iris, like there, right? On the other side, it's different because there's fire across it, but we'll mark it out about there. So intense looking, and then we'll go with that sort of flat, serious mouth shape and we might leave a bit of a gap in the middle for his where his lips sort of meet right so it's a thing in anime where they do this sometimes you know they'll do this kind of little gap there just in the middle so he's kind of downturned lip on that side and this one's sort of downturned a bit as well so he's not happy and then bottom lip line just there right then chin like so now you notice now this whole space is bigger than this because we want the illusion of his head tilted forward so there's a bit of perspective right so because like normally the distance from eyes to the nose is the same as nose to chin but when you're drawing a character with an intense head tilt forward like lunging in at you you want this space to be a bit smaller so i would say it's probably the bottom eyelid to the nostril is about the same as nostril to chin and then the proportions in here are the same as usual which is nostril to bottom lip about the same as bottom lip to chin so that's like that's halfway between here and here right and this is halfway between like the bottom eyelid and the chin, roughly speaking, right? We just want this to be smaller than this on the vertical axis. So then jaw. Goes up the side. Right? Kind of in line with the nose underneath the edge of the eyes normally it's in line with the mouth but again because of the head tilt it's a bit higher up so then we gradually sort of curve it up then to that sideburn okay So we have those black lines on the inside, three on each side. So you can just mark them out here. Two, three, 
they cur kind of curve around his cheek, right? And then they curve that way, right? So they curve like up towards, right up towards the sideburn on this side. They kind of look like teardrops at first. <laughs> um, and then up that way. Okay. Right, and then his ears, so kind of high up here where the headband starts. Again, because of the head tilt, things shift and change their position. So ears on a character facing forward are normally like lower down. But because of the head tilt again, they're like higher up. Bit of perspective going on. And then you can put ear lines inside. The easiest way I always find is just this sort of letter J thing. It's just like a little trick to make it look like an ear really quick. And then if you want to add a bit more detail, just like a little bump here on the inside and some extra little curve lines on the inside there. Now, so his headband then is like, everything looks like it's kind of on fire, right? So you can add like some spikes and it kind of becomes his hair, right? So like in this sort of chakra mode, there is like a little hint of the headband, but then mostly everything is kind of like attached to his hair and right. And it's different Naruto hair. It's not the standard spikes. So, metal plate is still involved, so we'll do a curve line there and a curve line here. And then this comes back around underneath, like so. And the top kind of curves around then this way. And it's got a bit of an edge line here just to make it look a little bit three-dimensional. And then we got studs keeping it attached to the fabric. And there is actually some cracks and stuff, which is kind of cool on this one. I do like when they make Naruto look a bit more dark than he normally is, really. Yeah. You know, it's like he was... Just a little less lighthearted and a bit more serious about things. But you know, I like the lighthearted light Naruto as well. Because sometimes it's cool to entertain different versions. So, uh, Leaf Village. So, you could do a single line or the double to make it look like it's actually pressed into the metal, right? So, we'll do the double because it's big enough that we can draw it. So we go an arrow pointing that way, right? And then to make it look like the double, you got to put the raised up metal plate part inside, right? And then that spiral, right? So it goes, curves around to the top first. And then we have the tail that kind of sticks out here. Then this is squared off at the end. And then it goes back into there. Right? And this will spiral all the way around to the middle and then back around to this section. So it'll go like around and in and then back around to there because it's a double line. So we're just gonna try and curve this as best we can. Right. Like that, right? Bit of a spiral. And then we're going to go back around again and connect it down here.
trying to maintain the same thickness, but it can be tricky. Right, but roughly like that. Now, hair. Now his hair is kind of a bit more crazy than normal. So I had another image yet there. So that's what it's normally like. It's kind of normally real smooth. So what do we do? We'll go something in between. So we'll go like that horn first that kind of sticks up here. Right, kind of like that. And we'll put some texture on it. Just kind of like a line going across there for the headband. Okay, and we'll go this side then. And this is kind of long. And it can be sort of rough, you know, in, in, in these drawings. You don't have to be like perfect with it. You can be like sketchy and that kind of does make it look a bit better sometimes all right so those two sort of they're like cool his ears or something and then we fill in the rest with hair spikes around the outside and hair spikes in the middle and then there's some like texture in here so let's go over the side and it is a bit crazy so and he's got headband flying that way and headband flying that way and then like more fire and everything so this way and you're just adding them wherever you think they need them basically You might hear some noise in the background. My kids are running around. Sorry about that. <laughs> some people have commented saying, I can hear kids screaming in the background. It's like, yeah, dad life. Okay. <laughs> That's neither here nor there. So we keep going. Loads of these hair spikes then. You might go off the page a little bit there. This way. Just keep adding fire like hair spikes. There's some coming down the back here. It is kind of like he's on fire, so I'll add some like in the air and everything around him. But first there's some there's some more sort of textures in here. Like they add a bit, bit of extra detail. So there's lots of these like extra texture lines and hair lines and stuff. Boom. And that's all like sort of glowing fire like yellow, sort of that sage six path color. It's kind of cool. Right, so his headband sort of comes off this way, and again, this is like spiky and kind of on fire and stuff like that, so it just goes off the page there. And we'll do the other one. There is like fire up here, but I think that's not connected. I think it's like its own sort of thing, just going this way. So there is loads of fire and stuff around his head, but we'll do the other headband line, maybe here, coming out from here. 
and we can go quite long with it, I think. Because we can. Right. But I'll add the rest of the fire when we get his body in. So, he's got like a zipper line, right? It comes straight down from his chin. there and then you know you could you could add the actual they do a lot of detail in these they actually draw in this box and then we've got those sort of zipper lines like that right so then his collar it's that Naruto sort of bumpy uh, polo neck type collar thing that goes down that way and then we have his hood like his cloak you know the bijou sort of cloak that comes up and that'll all be sort of on fire and stuff here he kind of looks like a villain kind of So this stuff is all like just flame sort of chakra. Bit more hair actually behind his ears. I'll just do that. I just loved how intense he looked in it. I thought I had to draw that. Credit to whoever prompted it. I think it is an AI anyway. And then collar. neck muscles in there so he's got that extra sort of bumpy kind of section just coming down here and each of these might have just like a texture line just there like that and then we have some designs right so some of those things you see in like Sasuke's Sharingan you know those I think they're called Tomei's they're little commas or like half of the yin and yang sort of symbol and there's big ones down here so like say and they have like different patterns inside them as well so like a big one here and they all sort of curve down around his collar how do they get the AI, AI to like add these things like do you have to like tell it or is it just sort of random look at the draw probably is Right, so the rest is like collar sort of on fire and then shoulders. So, and his collar goes like all the way around like the top of his head, right? So it's like, like all these fiery sort of chakra lines. And you could do it kind of random, you know, it doesn't have to be like mine. I'm just like, letting the marker sort of my hand kind of loose and you know just letting it do its own sort of thing and there's all these fold lines then that go down that way and then so it comes up behind his head on the other side crazy amount of fire and chakra sort of so all 
these texture lines again, just. And then his shoulders and his shoulders are wide enough. So it's like head width, the width of his head bring out to like where his sort of shoulder goes down. So it like goes down that way. You know, the width of his head on the other side. Right, kind of like that. So you're about three heads across. It's normal in male characters, right? So, and this can be sort of on fire as well, if you want. And... Um, yeah, and then like all these texture lines, so all this fire, and then he has sort of circular symbols on his shoulder, so like, and it's kind of different in the AI generated version, but... We'll just go with like circles here. Maybe another circle on the inside. And that'll just be like kind of colored black. It's kind of like a bullseye. Like so. Right, and we'll go more fire, so like more sort of stuff coming down. Maybe across his body a little bit. You have lots of like stuff all sort of floating, maybe something on his face like some fire coming across the face here. That'd be kind of cool. Of course, that's totally optional. I'm just like adding what I think might look good. You gotta be brave when you're doing stuff like this because you're like covering what you've drawn, you know? So you might need to erase some stuff when you're coloring it, but cool. Sort of intense Naruto, Sage, Six Path, Kurama, Bijou, etc. Sort of mode, like a mix sort of thing. Hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.